I've been conducting a ton of tests from the 380 ACP micro pocket pistols to find what ammo will perform best and give us the best chance of being able to score an incapacitating hit if we're ever forced to use a little tiny pocket pistol like this in a defensive encounter. And I tested a ton of rounds and I came to the conclusion that of the reigning hollow points that were out there, Precision 1 with the Hornady XTP bullet made the most consistent load that performed the best through the gel. Then there's the flat nose FMJ a lot of people recommend. A lot of people out there are like, you know, no hollow point is even worth considering with 380 because the 380, let's be fair, the 380 is a very challenging caliber to load for. And I said that in my very first test when I when I started on the Ammo Quest because there's, there's too much power for a full metal jacket because they, they over penetrate. You know, when we're looking at 12 to 18 inches of penetration being the standards that the FBI set, they want to see no less than 12, no more than 18. The uh, full metal jackets penetrate way too deep. In my testing, I found that especially these flat nose went around 25 to 27 inches, well over the 18 inch limit. On the other hand, the hollow points usually don't penetrate deep enough. In all the testing I did, and I tested well over 30, 30 tests that I did, um, most of the hull points came up short. They fell short of the 12-inch limit. So the Precision 1 was one of the few, uh, really, any round that used the XTP bullet. Uh, so basically, the XTP bullet is the thing I should be talking about. That did well enough. From the little pistol, it would normally go over 12 inches and stop short of 18. Expansion was consistent with Precision 1. It wasn't always consistent with the other XTPs. Um, but overall, the performance was good enough that I called this the flat-out winner. Well, now we've got a totally different candidate in an entirely different bullet construction, and this is promising enough that I'm reopening the ammo quest for this specific ammo. Lehigh Defense Extreme Penetrator. This is a solid bullet, like a full metal jacket. It doesn't expand, so it should never fail. You know, a lot of the hollow points that I tested would would clog up in denim and fail and then end up performing no better than a full metal jacket. That can't happen to this because there is no hollow point and it doesn't expand. But it doesn't give you the pathetic little tiny wound channel that F FMJ does. FMJ doesn't really cut a lot of flesh. It just kind of moves it out of the way as it pokes its way through and you end up with a little tiny pinprick of a wound channel. What this claims is that it's got these notches, these grooves cut out into it, and it says that what's gonna happen is the flesh or the blood or, or whatever fluid that it's that the bullet is traversing through is gonna get compressed into these grooves and then forcefully shot out and so the result is supposed to be a larger wound channel. As this thing goes spinning along as it rotates and as it's compressing and throwing this, this fluid or flesh or whatever it is, throwing it out into the wound cavity, it's supposed to actually cut a bigger diameter hole than a hollow point, a bigger diameter hole than an FMJ would. And because there's additional drag caused by that process, it's supposed to not over penetrate the way an FMJ does. So is it possibly the ideal bullet design for a 380 pocket pistol? Or is it overhyped marketing that's just not gonna do anything and it's an expensive machine bullet and it'll cost you a lot more and you should just stick with the hollow point in the first place? There's no way to know from here, but I do know how we can find out. We can head to the range with professional ballistic gelatin and four layers of heavy denim. So I'm gonna test the bullet in bare gel and in denim cover gel. I'm also going to test all these bullets in the same block. So we have side-by-side -side results in the same gel block so we can really compare how these three different types of ammunition perform. Okay, this deserves rerunning here. Look at the gigantic wound cavity that this makes deep into the gel block. I've never seen a 380 do anything like this. At the top here, we have the Lehigh 380 Extreme Penetrators through the bare gel. And we had one at 16 and a quarter and one at 16 and a half. And those are as ideal as you could ever hope for. I mean, that's pretty much perfect penetration. Then we had two 
that went further, one went to 19 and one went to 19 and a quarter. Those are a little disappointing. Uh, normally our cutoff would be 18 inches. So having them go to 19 or 19 and a quarter does represent some overpenetration. However, it is dramatically less overpenetration than a full metal jacket would do. In my FMJ testing, I found that round noses went to 23 inches, roughly 23 to 24, and the flat noses went to about 27. So having them stop at 19, that's much better than it stopping at 27. It's not perfect, it's not ideal, but it's not bad. The rest of the testing I did was all through denim. These two along the bottom are the Lehigh Extreme Penetrators through denim, and they stopped at 13 and 13 and a half inches which is ideal. That's perfect. I mean, I'd love to see 15, but uh, the minimum is 12, so I'll take 13 and 13 and a half, especially considering that through denim, they can't fail. They can't plug up. They can't get deformed. They're solid bullets. There's nothing to go wrong. So as long as they go over 12 inches and they stop below, you know, 18, 19, that, that's all good. So to have them stop at 13, 13 and a half through denim is really, really good. Okay, next we're going to show you the Winchester white box flat noses. When I shot these through bear gel, I got about 27 inches. This time I went through denim and that brought it down some, but still gross over penetration. One went to 22 inches and the other one went to 23 and a half. So the flat nose FMJs represent a substantially more significant over penetration hazard than the Lehigh's do. And then later I'll show you the damage tracks and, and why I'm really interested in this load. But the final one to compare is the Precision One hollow point. Now the Precision One was the winner of my 380 ACP ammo quest. And it did well here, not quite as well as it did before. This time it stopped at 11 and a half inches. And I don't like just testing one bullet at a time because you can have this kind of thing happen. I mean, in the finals of my ammo quest, it was going, you know, 13, 13 and a half inches. In this particular test, it went 11 and a half. Who knows if I had fired five of them, I would probably have more of an average of 12 and a half to 13. But I only fired one and this one came up a little short. But the thing is, it's fair to compare it to the others because we were in the same block. So for my preferred hollow point to have gone 11 and a half inches, and for this new Lehigh XP to not need expanding and also went 13 to 13 and a half, I think that bodes pretty well for the Lehigh. Now let's look at the damage tracks. So this is a cross section of the gel taken from two inches in. Now, regular viewers will know that I don't normally bother showing the actual wound track because in general, the damage that takes place in the very first few inches really doesn't matter. You know, it'll be, it'll be a flesh wound, but it's not really significant in terminal performance. But I just want to demonstrate this so you can see the difference of these type of bullets. The reason I took this at two inches is because that's when the hollow point, the precision one, was at its largest. And so that will show its most damage, and we're going to compare that to the XPs and also to the Winchester flat nose. Those are three examples of the XP. So you can see that they definitely do a little bit of damage. I mean, a lot bigger than than just the diameter of the bullet. We're, we're up to about an inch across on those. The hollow point, it has, it has, this is during its expansion phase when the petals are first peeling back, so that's why it's at its biggest, and so it's doing the most damage it's going to do. So you can see that, yes, the hollow point is bigger, but as far as all the rest of them go in that first two inches, they're all the same. We're not really given much up by going with the full metal jacket or with the XP. They're all doing a notable amount of damage in the first inch or so. Now let's look later, deeper in the wound track. Okay, this is about eight inches into the wound track. When we look at what the flat nose are doing, they're just pretty much a little tiny hole. Whereas the XP is still pushing the tissue out of the way and still ripping chunks of tissue that are a bigger diameter wound cavity than the bullet itself should be capable of doing. It's doing hollow point style damage even deep in the wound track. And this section's about 11 inches in, so we're coming up right on the, right on the back of the hollow point. It, it stopped at 11 and a half. And you can see at the top there, these Lehigh XPs are still cutting a big nasty slice out of the flesh they're still damaging. Whereas the hollow point, that's just a little round hole at this point. You don't really see practically any additional cutting there. 
And with the flat nose full metal jacket, it's pretty much just making a pinhole at this point. Whereas these XPs, they're still slicing and dicing away. So this, to me, is pretty darn impressive that that, that little solid bullet is doing much, much more damage than the full metal jacket is, and it's doing even more damage than the hollow point is, and it's still going. It's still penetrating even further than the hollow point did, and doing more damage than the hollow point is. All right, let's look at the recovered bullets, although there's really nothing to see. These are the bear gel, these are the denim, these were all through denim as well. The expanded hollow point, of course, expanded, so that shows something different, but all the rest of them, they're just solid bullets. There's, there's no deformation, there's, no, there's, there's nothing to notice. Denim can't affect them, bones can't affect them, nothing can affect them. They will perform the same every time. And I gotta say, that's a really appealing aspect, especially when we're talking about a, a caliber where bullet performance can be as unpredictable as a little 380 can be. Obviously, the full metal jackets performed exactly as they should. These little cutouts, these little grooves that are in there, actually did make a much bigger damage cavity, even over what the hollow point did. Even though the hollow point is a bigger bullet, the overall damage cavity was done. that was done was bigger in the extreme penetrator. Well, this delivers all the penetration that you would possibly need and it brings it down. Instead of going 25 inches, 23 inches, 27 inches like I've had these do, the worst it went was 19 or 19 and a half, I think. And that ain't bad. It's, it, I would rather it stayed under 18, but if I had a choice of a bullet that could potentially fail or one that could grossly over penetrate or one that does 13 to 17 inches normal with the worst case of 19 and it does a much bigger wound cavity, this thing wins hands down across the board. This is my new favorite ammo. And all I'm gonna say is if this feeds properly in your gun, this is what I would load a 380 with. Um, well done to Lehigh for thinking outside the box, for coming up with a design that, that does damage deep, which is where you really need it. What happens superficially, no big deal. What happens deep in the wound cavity when the bullet actually impacts the vital organs, that's what matters. If you put the shot on target with this, I think this will have more terminal effect than an FMJ would, or even than an expanded hollow point would. And when you're trying to stop someone from attacking you or your loved ones, that's what you need is the best terminal effect you can get. I think as far as the 380, it's a challenging caliber to load for, but I think this is the best that I've seen. Lehigh Extreme Penetrator. So, well done Lehigh. Thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, hit the like button and please hit the subscribe button so you'll be notified when the next video is posted.